did not let up. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be working on my 14 bolt axle and maybe the Dana 60, I'm not sure. I might just keep this one to the 14 bolt. Um, and specifically, we're going to be talking about diff covers and shave kits. Um, so if you're not familiar with what a shave kit is, basically it's a diff cover. Lots of different companies sell them. Um, and it shaves the bottom portion of the diff off, so of the pumpkin. Um, this is super, super common when it comes to the 14 bolt axle. Um, the 14 bolt is a phenomenal axle. It's huge, huge rain gear. Um, and so because of that, it's strong and can hold up to pretty much any size tire you want to throw at it. But the problem is, is it's basically a freaking boat anchor. I mean, you can see how massive this pumpkin is and it hangs down so far. If I look on the back here, I mean, there's, there's an, an inch or so of just lip here that doesn't even serve any purpose um, and then the ring gear sits quite a ways up in here um, and so people have learned that if you machine the ring gear down a little bit you can actually cut pretty much the whole bottom of this housing off and gain like two inches of ground clearance so that's what we're going to be doing today um, and the fun part is I actually got one for the Dana 60 as well um, so I've never seen one of these done in person before, um, but uh, I'm pretty excited to see how much clearance it gains as well. This one, you do not need to shave the ring gear. This one, you have to shave the ring gear a lot. So I'm going to have to take my ring gear to a machine shop or something, um, or uh, put it on a grinder and grind it down myself, one or the other. Um, but yeah, so they provide, th these kits are ballistic fab. That's why the little skull there and the skull there. Um, there's lots of other companies that do them. TMR Customs is another really good one that people use. Um, and there's even for 14 bolts, so shave kits that don't shave quite as much off and you don't have to machine your ring gear. So if you wanted to go that route, you totally could. Um, Ballistic Fab is one that I like. Um, they provide a plate for the bottom as well as all the new hardware and a super, super beefy diff cover with beautiful welds all around. Um, so these are super good. For the cutting of the housing, honestly, I'm pretty freaking nervous to do it. I've never personally done one of these. Um, and the 14 bolt, yeah, sure, those axles are cheap, but I mean, I've already got a $400 truss welded on it. So if I mess this up, uh, yeah, I'm in trouble. And the 60 is even worse, you know, those, those are a lot of money. Um, and so it's kind of nerve wracking to cut the housing in half like that, but, uh, I'm just gonna undercut it and slowly grind away until it fits. Um, so that way I don't, you know, take too much material off. Uh, for the cutting, my plan is to bolt the housing or the diff cover onto the diff, take a scribe, or this is one of those little uh, steel pencils. They're super cool if you don't know about these. Look at that, marks on there, it's on there forever. Um, I'm gonna mark across the bottom of the diff cover once it's bolted to the uh the diff and uh then i'll have a nice little line to then measure the thickness of the bottom plate here and do an additional line that that much thickness above it right so if this is i don't know a quarter inch or whatever then i'll go a quarter inch above whatever the bottom of this line is um because you don't right th this lines up with this so i need to cut at the top of this right here uh, so that is the plan as far as how i'm going to cut <laughs> because you have to cut quite a bit around the backside too, right? And so tracing that, even though I'm gonna have a line across here, tracing that line across the back is going to be difficult. So my plan is to use a uh, square here, just a big one, line it up on the line that I'm gonna draw like that, and then that'll give me a line to trace around the bottom. Um, we'll see how good that works. I've seen people do it a whole bunch of different ways. I've heard of people, uh, scribing a line on the bottom and then dunking the diff in like oil or something and that would give you like a line across the bottom there's lots of different ways to do it i'm just gonna undercut a bunch and then slowly with a flap disc flap it away um, until it fits right so for cutting um i'm going to try a whole bunch of different stuff like i said i haven't done one of these yet so i'm learning along with you guys here um, i think a sawzall blade a big long one is going to be my best bet um, and then if I'm struggling, obviously a big cutoff wheel will get through it. Um, I don't have a ton, but I can go to the store and get more if I need to. 
um, and then like I said a flop disc for the end. Uh, for welding, so you can MIG weld these but I'm just going to let you know that I I have had a lot of problems MIG welding these cast steel diffs, um, these cast steel housings. Uh, even though I'm preheating them, I'm running a temp gun on them to like four to 500 degrees and then I'm slowly letting them cool. Um, I had lots and lots of issues with that on my 44 uh, and man, it was starting to get really stressful. And the, and the one thing that ended up actually working was these uh, nickel, pure nickel weld rods. Um, and I don't know the exact terminology on them. Um, says EN1 there. I don't know. Uh, my roommate is a professional welder and he looked it up and this is what you're supposed to use to weld mild steel to cast steel like that. Um, and once we did that, the 44 was solid and it never ever had a problem ever again. So I am going to be stick welding the uh, shave kits on as well as the tubes around uh, the housings while I'm at it uh, with uh, pure nickel rod. Now if you're doing a shave kit like this and uh, let's say you don't have a stick welder or you don't know how to stick weld and you're much more comfortable with a MIG welder, you can totally do this with just a MIG welder. There's tons and tons and tons of people who have. I know people who have done it without even preheating the housing and they've had perfect luck with them. Um, so I'm sure you could totally do that. You could watch another video on how to do that. That's just not exactly how I'm going to be doing this in this particular axle. So I already have the, uh, the mounting ledge here all wire wheeled and cleaned up. Um, so the next step I guess is to get the diff cover on um, bolted nice and tight and then I'm going to scribe a line across the bottom wherever it is. <whistles> Doesn't that look pretty? Dang, it looks so good. So and now that I have that on here, you can see how much we are going to remove. It's kind of uh, scary and intimidating, but we are going to be cutting a whole bunch of this off and we are going to gain a ton of ground clearance. So you can see I am going to have to cut some of this on the back side off like that as well. Um, so that's going to be the hard tricky part. Um, so I'm going to mark this with a line, measure the distance, undercut the crap out of it. And then once I have it cut, I'm going to take the plate that it came with and bolt the plate onto the bottom of the diff cover and then slowly flap disc the rest of the housing until the diff cover lines back up again with the plate on the bottom. Um, and what, when you do that, you'll be able to see, you know, what needs to be ground down more. Um, and that is the current plan. Dang, that looks good. Gosh, that's a good looking axle. All right, so kind of hard to see on the camera but there is a line there um, it's not coming off and so now I need to go and measure the bottom plate see how thick that is and then we'll draw a line that far up all right so the plate ended up being a half inch exactly and so I went one eighth less than that um, and I have my, you can see my first line and my second line. I did end up doing the second line in a paint pen just so it stuck out a little brighter for the camera. Um, so that is a lot to take off, a little nerve wracking. Um, so, but we need to trace that line around the backside as well as best we can. Um, and again, I'm going to use the straight edge for that or the, uh, square for that. And, uh, yeah, wish me luck. All right, so this is where I'm at so far. Um, I use these little magnets to help hold the uh, square in place, and then I traced a line. Um, you can see how I have two lines there, and that's because I messed up on the first one. I could totally see how someone else could do that. Um, forgive the lighting; I'm working in the dark here. Um, so it was, it was totally my instinct to when I had the straight edge up. Right, imagine the straight edge just hanging here to kind of tuck the pin in and draw a line like that. And I uh, luckily caught it and realized, no, 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 that's not right because I needed to lay the pin completely flat up against the straight edge there um, to get the line correct. 
and even then I came back through with the paint pan and I, I undercut it a little more because again, I'm, I'm super nervous to do this. So this side pretty much just followed right along this seam right here. Um, and I think I'm pretty close because if you look at the shape and angle of that compared to the shape and angle of this, right at about, goes to about the right depth, about the right size. I think that's about it. So, unfortunately, I think the next step is to cut it off. All right. Definitely looks like I'm undercutting it, which is good. That's what I wanted. <clears throat> I would much rather spend an incredibly long time with a flap disc, sanding it down slowly, than overcut it and have to fill a gap on cast. I don't want to deal with that. So, looks like it's working. I'll just keep going. First cut done. Um, it was a workout fighting the sawzall. Um, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be uh, time wise. It kind of just cut through it. I mean, you're definitely there for a while. This thing's pretty thick as you can see, so it took a, took a long time to get through this part. But once I got to the bottom, it just kind of ripped right through there. You can definitely see how much I undercut, which I'm stoked about because my angle grinder will make pretty quick work of that. Um, and now I can slowly fit it on at my own pace. <laughs> um, in the beginning, I, I tried using the sawzall the whole time, but I was having a hard time getting it started on the, because there, there was no channel or anything. Um, so I switched to my angle grinder and I just cut a little groove in on both sides, um, just enough for the, the sawzall blade to sit in. And then I let the sawzall uh, do its work for the rest of the way. 
Um, and from the beginning, I had the sawzall blade pointed out because I knew I wanted to undercut. I didn't want it to like get away from me and start, you know, going inside. If you ever use a sawzall, you know, sometimes they kind of have a mind of their own of, as far as what path they want to travel. So I was trying to keep that under control the whole time. Um, magnet. Yeah, so that's pretty sweet. So I guess the next step is to uh, bolt the bottom plate onto the diff cover and then slide the diff cover on and we'll get a good view of how much more we need to take off and clean up. One annoying thing is the lower four bolts are a different size than the rest of them. Um, I don't know why they did that. I guess because they couldn't fit any bigger in the plate, but that's kind of annoying because you have to keep an eye on them. It takes a different size Allen, so you have to have two sockets, whatever. It'll be worth it. It's on there, the bottom plate is on, um, and you can see the holes are pretty far off still, um, which is which is good, that's what I wanted. Um, so not much, I mean I can see the bottom of the holes. Uh, you can see my original line that I traced is actually relatively close to where we need to be. Um, so I guess I'll take the grinder and just start taking some material off. And I'm just going to put this dip cover aside and keep it nice and close and readily check it all the time and until it lines up. Going to be here a minute. All right, it's a new day. Uh, I'm back. It got too dark to film last night, but I did make some good progress. So you can see uh, they're not quite lined up yet, but it's starting to take shape and look like something. So I just need to continue to slowly grind at this. I'm just using a flap disc. I, mean, I feel like I'm not making enough progress with that and it's taking too long. I do have these orange uh, stones that really eat away at them quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna keep, keep sanding away until it fits and lines up. Sitting here grinding. Um, I've been kind of like standing over the top of it and you can visually see where the high sides are so I've just been slowly taking material off. Um, oh, just happened. Damn it. Okay, sorry about that. Axe fell. Um, anyway, so I've just been slowly taking material off um, and it's starting to get up there. Let me show you what it looks like. So, you can see we're pretty close on the left hand side. It needs to go up a little bit more, but it's close. I mean, I could almost get a bolt on this one. The right side's a different story. Um, and the diff cover does look a little crooked, so I need to focus more on this side. Um, I'm every once in a while picking this diff cover up and setting it on here just like this and checking it out. Um, so I need to focus a lot more here, try and get it leveled out. I think once these get close to the hole, maybe these will come up but I'm just gonna try and keep going. And close, got both sides almost completely in the hole. <clears throat> Towards the later stages here, I'm just really, really focusing on trying to keep it nice and even. Um, I don't wanna have any massive holes to fill because I got a little too uh, flap disc happy in one spot. So I'm just trying to hold the grinder nice and flat and really take my time here. Man, look at the clearance, it was crazy. It's going to be awesome. All right, well, I have it bolted on. I somehow already lost a bolt, so that's great. Um, but I got all the holes lined up. This side I pretty much nailed. Looks pretty good all the way down. Totally weldable gap all the way down. The bottom looks good. But this side, man, I really really screwed the pooch on this one guys I mean you can see the gap 
I just got a little too excited. This, this side was thinner than this side and so it was grinding down faster and so when I was just doing my nice even passes it was going down quicker over here and by the time I realized it it was kind of already too late. Um, it's bad but it, I think it's still weldable. Um, I've seen bigger gaps welded. That if it wasn't cast I wouldn't even be concerned about it but the fact that this is cast uh, like I said, I have have terrible luck with cast welds. I mean, you can see over here. You can see over here. Maybe the light would get out of the way. Uh, th this is where I tried to weld the tube here. I did. This was a MIG weld. This was preheated. This was slowly cooled and uh, really cranked up on the welder. And I haven't even like done anything with this axle, and the the weld is already cracked. Um, and that's just kind of what I've always seen with welding to cast like this. Uh, so. I don't know. Maybe I'll have my uh, my roommate weld this one up because, like I said, he's he's a phenomenal welder, much much better than I. Um, and I really don't want this to leak or like rip off or anything. So, but other than that, look at the ground clearance, you guys. I mean, it is insane. So excited. That plus the bigger tires, uh, I should have clearance forever. It's gonna be great. I still gotta go get the rain gear machine down. Um, you can take that to a shop and have them do it, or uh, my neighbor actually does it, <laughs> coincidentally. So I'm gonna walk it down there and see if he can do it. And uh, yeah, 14 bolt shave, done. Well, other than the welding. All right, so while we wait for uh, my roommate Bubba to come over, he's gonna be the one who's actually welding these because I'm a pretty trash stick welder. Uh, so in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and shave the 60 as well. Um, it's the exact same procedure. Um, I don't know how much of it I'm actually gonna film because it's, like I said, it's the exact same thing. Just, you know, line the diff cover up, draw a line, measure the thickness, the plate. I think it's the exact same thickness actually. Um, and then we'll just cut it off. Um, Honestly, I'm a lot more nervous to do the 60. <laughs> Those axles are worth a lot more money. Uh, so hopefully we don't fuck up. Three hours later. Look at that. That is terrifying. But I think we did it. I definitely undercut it um, a lot on the bottom, especially. We got about halfway through and I got nervous that I was too angled in. So I like stopped and cut it off with the cutoff wheel and then angled the saws all really far out. Uh, but looking good. Definitely gonna have to grind quite a bit, but I am okay with that. It's a new day. Came back out. Got the diff cover sitting on here. Looks nice and pretty. Lots of clearance. Pretty excited for this. You can see I got a lot closer this time around. The holes almost line up, so I just got to shave a little bit more off the top here. I'll slow, do the same exact thing as 14 bolt, slowly grind it till it fits, and then both of these should be ready to go for weld. All right, so the time has come for us to weld the shave kits on. Um, I've got my buddy Ethan here, you guys have met him before. Uh, neither of us are fantastic stick welders, but he is by far the better one out of the two of us, so I'm gonna have him <laughs> run the stick weld here. Uh, so couple notes is we are using pure nickel rod Whoa. pure nickel rod um, and that's because this is the the one material that's meant to fuse mild steel to cast steel um, and so I've like I said uh, earlier I've tried this with not necessarily a shave kit but welding cast with MIG before um, I, you can even see I did it here on this axle and even though the weld looked really nice and pretty and doesn't matter how pretty the MIG weld looks, it's gonna crack, at least in my in my case it always has. Um, but the minute I started using these pure nickel rods, um, it doesn't crack anymore. So uh, we're gonna be using that. Another note is, uh, you can see I did end up grinding a little bit too far right here. It's not a huge gap, but it is a little bit of a gap. And so I'm gonna pull this plate off and I'm gonna build up a little bit of MIG weld on this, um, just the plate, just to kind of bridge that hole there so we can get a nice solid good corner joint to weld all the way around um, one other note is i don't know how crucial this is but again we did this last time that i welded uh cast um, and that's we used a peen hammer so if you're not familiar with what one of these does because i definitely wasn't is it's just a bunch of little tiny needles and you push them and they 
bounce around and basically peen the weld, right? So if you whack it with a screwdriver or a, a hammer or something, um, it'll peen the weld, basically beating it and allowing it to kind of wiggle around as it cools off. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't get such a tight, you know, as, it, as the metal cools. Uh, so we're gonna be using that after every pass to peen the weld, get it, you know, let it cool, let it uh, solidify, and then we'll do another pass until, I'm not even sure how many passes we're gonna need, but until it looks done. Um, and then I might end up just MIG welding the inside. I don't know, but I definitely wanna get a bead on the inside as well, um, just so uh, it's welded on both sides. Not just the part you're welding because it's so big, it's just, it's just a big piece. Here, so. So we got the plate welded on, looks pretty good. You can really tell that the, the nickel rod really fused with the cast, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the next thing that we're doing is I'm just gonna give it a post heat because I checked with the thermometer and it was starting to get a little cool. You want this all to get really hot and cool really slow at the exact same time. Um, so I'm gonna give it some nice post heat. We're gonna weld the tubes while we're here and then we're gonna wrap it up with a weld blanket and let it cool really slow overnight. 
All right, so now that the tubes are welded, the bottom of the shave kit is all welded up. We took the diff cover off, and I'm gonna go through with the MIG gun and just uh, weld the inside as well. It's still very, very warm. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna hit it with one more post heat and wrap it up and call it a day.